Well, all right, viewers, we got another Lamborghini to enter the collection today. It's made by Kyosho. It's from their first Lamborghini collection. It's the Uraco. Uraco? Uraco? I can't really pronounce it any other way. Uraco? <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if there's another way to pronounce that or not, but that's how I'm going to say it. So, I'm not Italian. You know, you can obviously tell that I'm not an Italian person. I do what I can, but I'm not remotely perfect. If you want to pause there, there are the other cars in this collection. Uh, pretty good lineup. Yeah, looks pretty good. Uh, you'll see here in the bottom, it's from 2004. So, pretty old model now. Uh, no price on this box that I can see, but I'm pretty sure it's four bucks. Somewhere in the four dollar range, based on uh, the other ones from this time frame. Or even later ones that cost four dollars and twenty cents. Okay, so it's also interesting to see that this thing uh, is in a blister pack. It's not your typical slide-out blister. It's literally a sealed blister pack. But before we get into that, let's look at this card here. So this is a 1972 version. Uh, it was This car was available that year. It was its first year, and it was sold up until 1979. And I uh, can't make any of that out other than the fact that it's a 2 plus 2 seating configuration. There are the other colorways. I chose purple because I don't really have many purple cars in my collection. Uh, Araco is a uh, little bull in Italian, from what, according to Wikipedia. This car was designed by Marcello Gandini, who's designed many other Lamborghinis and a lot of cool cars that uh, people love. And this thing was powered by a V8 engine, so it's not a. It wasn't the top line Lambo. It was actually designed to compete with the Ferrari Dino and the Maserati Mirac, or Mirac. Okay, let's get this off the stand here. So the V8 engine uh, varied in size depending on the year, either 2 liters up to 3 liters, making only 180 to 250 horsepower. So again, it's it's a small Lambo at a, pri a lower price point. But they still made around 790 of these things according to uh, Wikipedia, so... That's a pretty good production run, I guess, for a 1970s Lamborghini. Okay, well, look at that photograph there. Hmm, seems like I pulled up the wrong photograph. Okay, I'm back with better photos. I actually don't, uh, I try to go into these reviews blind because I want to be finding the problems or be impressed for real, right? But unfortunately, it's, it's kind of hard to do if you don't know the year. It'd be nice to uh, check that out earlier, but anyways... This is a 1972 photograph, so now you can see that it's matching a bit better. In particular, the uh, you know turn signals are built into the bumper there, and then there's some fog lights there. So I think that looks all right. Okay, the wheels, yeah, they look similar. Those vents there, well, they tried. Okay, so rear view. Yeah, I mean, you got these little lights in the bumpers. You got these weird uh, bumperettes there. No license plate, but uh, I think it matches up that photograph pretty well. You know, four small exhaust tips. Okay. So. Alright, so yeah, it's a pretty cool magenta pink. I guess it's magenta. When I look at it with my own eyes, it's magenta. I'm not sure what your monitor will show, but... Okay, let's look at these wheels. These wheels they look like the ones that came from the LP400 Countach, the first uh, Countach. And so it's also got these really bulbous tires from that that era, the 70s there. We got the recessed door handle there, or less. it's pretty much flush. It's technically recessed a little bit, but it's supposed to be flush on the real car. And then a uh, little character line there. The door panel gaps seem okay. There's a little silver down here. I think that's a chrome strip on the real car. Makes noise, but it does roll. So yeah, we got those uh, turn signals. Whoa, I thought they were painted at first, but no, those are actual orange plastic uh, turn signals because you can see it's actually carrying over underneath the bumper there. So that's pretty interesting. It's a super thick uh, turn signal. You can see in that little gap there. Okay, well that's nice. Nice to see. Could have easily been painted, being so small. Kind of like these little fog lamps there. They are painted. 
And I do feel like they should be bigger. On the photograph, they look much larger than this. Okay. And then, uh, what is this grill here? It's like a little textured grill. Seems to be plastic. Okay. Probably part of this piece. Alright, well, while we're down here, is press fit together. We got some treads. And, uh, a little exhaust. No paint, though, on the exhaust tips. Probably just raw steel. Mm, maybe not. They might be chrome tipped on the real ones. Okay, well, going around to the back. Yeah, this looks pretty accurate. You saw in the photograph, the print badge printing is really well done. So a little key lock there. Okay, uh, nice. Uh, you know, Gandini did the countach, I believe. So he's got trapezoids all over that countach. And you can see this trapezoid here in this car. Hmm, well, weird stain going on. You know, it must have come from the factory that way since it was brand new. Okay, a little black paint in these vents. That's pretty nice. Mm, the windows, they got a little silver trim painted on all of them and some silver on the wiper blades. So it's pretty nice. A uh, little vents here in the hood. No black paint though. This Lambo badge. Not expecting the most from the first Kyosho collection, but it looks like a bull somewhat. You can see now under this magnification, the paint rash is rough. Yeah, that's definitely not so great. Okay, well, interior, boy, I'm not even sure if I'm going to bother trying to show that. The, the windows are so narrow. But, it's got a lot of detail. It's just all black. So, that's just the Kyosho way. But I do believe that 1970s Lamborghinis, they very often had all black interiors. It looks like it's a black interior on that photograph, so I guess this is accurate. All right. Well, I gotta say, it's a pretty nice model, you know, except for the paint rash, but again, it's a pretty old one. I mean, 2004, so, and it sold for probably $4, so, okay. Um, let's see here. I want to talk about another one that I have had in my collection for a while. I just, I don't think I ever spoke about it. It was one of my early purchases, so I didn't really have my review format in line back then. And so it would be the Araco Rally. So let's pull this out here. This is by Kyosho as well. And there's an interesting story on this one. Uh, the chief test driver, Bob Wallace, he made this car. He took one of them and uh, he was also responsible for the Miura Hota. And so in the spare, his spare time in 1973, he converted a Yurako to this. It's called the Yurako Rally. And so he added a roll, roll cage inside of there. He stripped out the interior. The whole rear seat is missing. And then uh, he filled it in with a special fuel tank. And then uh, someone, someone in Japan got this thing and restored it into pristine condition. So it's the latest. The article I saw tells me this thing is in Japan somewhere. So naturally, you know, there's no rear wing on this Kyosho model. I think it would have been pretty much impossible to make those tiny struts there. So they just left the whole thing off. They didn't want to do new tooling for a wing. But they did do new tooling for this. This whole uh, chin spoiler here that's, you know, clearly on the real car. So that looks pretty accurate. And it's pretty interesting how the... Uh, whole front end is covered over like this. Look at that. It's, it reminds me of those Grachan collections, those Aoshima Skyline Liberty Walk Grachans. But here, look at the wheels. Those are That's a pretty good representation of that wheel right there. So, all right, let me pull this thing back into better light angle here. And let's go over this one. So it's got those little bubble mirrors on the fenders. So that's a nice thing that Kyosha does. They're not afraid to put on classic mirrors a lot of times. Ah, Lambo badge again, it's alright. Uh, different wiper blade, just one single wiper blade. Uh, yeah, so this is interesting. I never really looked at this model carefully. Plastic headlights. A little black paint here for that vent and these things here. These might go to the brakes maybe. But what's going on here? It looks like this is a grill or possibly an extra radiator or something. It's textured, but it's at an angle. Look at that. Interesting. Maybe it's an oil cooler or something. I'm just guessing. Uh, I don't know if that's a different orange. 
I think that's a different color. Yeah, this little turn signal or reflector or whatever, it's a different color. The wheels are nice. Yeah, okay. I think they're blanked off. I don't think there's light passing through there. No. Okay, the door handle's almost missing, though. The orange paint's really filled it in there. Hmm. Or, well, yeah, it's, it's missing. Okay, um, interesting. This is different from the other car as well. It's just a vent painted black. This thing is just plastic. Okay. These are different from the other. This has got two exhaust tips coming out, and they're dimensional. They got some depth there, so that's pretty nice. Little bumperettes, printing looks good, tail lamps look good, these little silver backup lights maybe? I guess that's what those are. The fender flares, nicely done. Nice big uh, tread blocks on the rears. Staggered tires, press fit together, so maintenance is an issue. Anyways, it's a pretty cool model. Um, I guess I will pull out the flashlight on this because it's supposed to be a 2 plus 2. Let's just see if those back seats are in there. Yeah. There's two little back seats and the front seats, right? So now, is this supposed to just have like a fuel tank in there? There's two seats and just a flat thing. I don't know if that's a fuel tank or not, but uh, definitely no back seats. And you can see, I think, a roll cage, or can you not? Yeah, it looks like you can see something through the side windows, right? Mm, so much distortion, but yeah, I see like a, a angled rod there, so I think there's like a half a roll cage back in there. It's not going up to the front though. Alright, so that's pretty good, Kyosho. You know, you went through the trouble to make this one model of only one exists in the history of the world, so... I mean, I never even knew about this car, so it's quite interesting how Kyosho will dedicate so many resources to such a random vehicle. Well, anyways, it's cool. I mean, it's a Lambo, so it's nice to actually learn stuff through collecting. And so, that's why I do it. Uh, I really don't know too much about cars, so... Wow, that's a big difference as well between the road... well, the regular Magenta one and this Rally version. Let me speed this up. The, the difference in width is quite... Significant. It might be hard to tell in this view, but let me, I'll look through the overhead in a second. It seems like the orange car is also lower. See? Look at that. It's lowered quite a bit, which makes sense. I, I think uh, Bob Wallace put in an adjustable suspension versus the stock ride height there. Okay, let's go with the overhead. Then you can really see that rally one. It's just bigger. It's interesting. I mean, the body's supposed to be the same, right? But it looks like the orange car is much wider in the front, and the headlamps are in a different location. I could see that, actually, between the photographs of the real one. But maybe... I don't know. Are those the same or not? I feel like the orange trunk here is wider than that magenta. Possibly, you know, this is the, maybe they got the dimensions of this wrong, and then when the next time around they made it wider to be more accurate. I didn't think to bring out the calipers on this one, so I guess we won't know, so sorry. Okay, but anyways, it's nice to see the differences in them. I don't even think I knew the Lamborghini Iraco existed before I started collecting these 164 scale cars. I knew about the Jalpa, which I don't think anyone makes, and, uh, hmm, so there's also the Silhouette. So, you know what, I do have those, that thing available, so let me pull out a bigger coaster here. Let's transition over to this one. Uh, I gotta tell you guys, this is maybe not a good purchase, this thing. I had glued this on to make the power button easy, easier to get to. But you see how I have this USB cable here? I have an 1860, 18650 battery in this. It's a rechargeable battery, but this thing will die on me. So I don't know why there's a USB cable. I don't think it's charging my battery. 
So I took the battery out and tried to run it. It won't run without a battery. But if it doesn't charge the battery, what good is having this USB thing? Uh, now is it just me and my unfortunate luck that maybe I just got a bad unit? I, I don't know. Or is it actually a poorly designed product? So just be mindful of that. There's tons of these on AliExpress. They have three buttons here. It says three speeds and it could take AAA's or an 18650. I currently have rechargeables in both banks because I want to see if this thing will die on me. So this rechargeable batteries of both sizes and is plugged in and we'll see if it dies in the future. Okay, sorry about that segue, but uh, if you guys are looking to buy this stuff, do your own reviews. I don't want you guys wasting your money. Okay, so I mentioned that the Yurako, the street one, was uh, competing against the Ferrari Dino. So this is by Kyosho as well. And uh, let's put this next to it, this thing here. Hmm, the Dino looks like it's a longer vehicle. Not too much different, though. Looks a little wider as well, but I'm starting to question the width dimensions of that Yurako. That, this magenta one versus the orange. And then uh, the Silhouette, I think, came along afterwards and uh, replaced this thing. So... The silhouette looks so much like the Jalpa, so I, I don't know what the differences are. I haven't compared photographs of the Jalpa with the silhouette. Okay, well anyways, this video is about the Yurakos today. Alright, well, I guess in typical Kyosho fashion, I mean, they're really good models for the price. At least the original price. I guess I'll see you guys in the next time around. Thanks for watching.